I've had quite a few requests lately to make a lesson on the bass line from Red House by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. This bass line was played by Noel Reddin, uh, and there's a bit of a twist here because he didn't actually play it on bass, he played it on guitar and detuned the guitar. When researching this bass line, I found that the facts were a bit confusing um, and it was difficult to find out what actually happened in the studio and um, if it was played on guitar, why was it played on guitar? Um, so I did a bit of digging and found some really interesting facts and I also found the letter from Noel Reddin um, that explains more. So keep watching this video to find out exactly what happened more than 50 years ago in the studio and also I'm going to show you two different bass lines that you can play both modelled on what Noel Redding played in the studio and the live version. So you can take those away and use them at jam nights or at blues gigs. You can download a PDF with all the written material from this lesson in standard notation and tab, and you can get that by clicking the link below this video in the description. To start with, we can look at the studio version of Red House from the Are You Experienced album, and this has Noel Redding playing guitar on it. So, as I said, I found a letter online when I was researching this bass line, and this letter was to Yas Obrick. Um, hopefully I've pronounced that right. Um, you can see here the letter. He was researching Jimi Hendrix, and he wrote a letter to Noel Redding, who replied um, with a lot of detail. So basically what Noel Redding's saying is that, because he was inexperienced on bass, he used to play through the bass lines and guitar first of all. So originally he was a guitarist, um, but he just wanted to play bass um, with Jimi Hendrix. Um, so this is a version of him playing through, and I read somewhere else that he never really intended this to be the final version, um, so we don't really know if that's true or not, um, but that's what's happened. He played this on guitar um, and detuned it. Now, if you use Spotify, then go on there and search for Noel Redding, um, then you'll click on him as the artist, and then click on Red House, and you'll hear a really interesting version now. I think Noel Redding re-released some of these um, tracks from the session, uh, the Are You Experience session, and you can actually hear uh, Jimi Hendrix saying that Noel Redding's gonna tune his guitar and he's gonna play guitar. Now, it, the track actually sounds like bass to me, so it's been mixed really well, um, but it's quite hard to play on a bass, as you'll see. The bass line that Noel Redding plays um, is really a kind of bass riff that you'd hear commonly played by a rhythm guitarist. And the only other time I've heard that played in the bass line before um, is by Tommy Shannon in the live version of Texas Flood. Um, he actually plays a kind of similar thing. I think it starts on G. So um, when I heard that, I actually thought that Tommy Shannon had to sort of come up with it, the first person to play it on bass. But I think now um, he probably heard this version with Noel Redding playing that riff. So I'm now going to give you a playable version of this kind of um, caudal pattern um, and later on in the video I'm going to show you a more kind of standard blues bass line that Noel Redding used to play actually on the bass when he played um, Red House live. The song follows a standard 12 bar blues progression. It's in B um, but Jimmy Hendrix would detune um, off and a half step so it's um, on the original you kind of hear it in B flat. So I'm going to do it in B for this lesson, but if you want to play with the original, then detune everything by a half step. This is the chord progression. So we've got B7, quick change, um, the quick four change to E7, and then B7 for two bars, E7 for two bars, B7 for two bars, F sharp seven, E7, B7, and then the kind of half bar B7, half a bar of F sharp seven. Um, so that's a real classic 12 bar progression. I'm going to go in on the first chorus, but for the intro, um, Jimi Hendrix kind of noodles around on the on the B7, um, and then when the band comes in properly, that's on bar five, so they hit the E7 and then just carry on through the 12 bar. So if you're doing it live um, at jam night, they might kind of do it like that. So the pattern for the B7, um, start with your first finger on B, okay, so that's the ninth fret of the D string and then you're playing an F sharp okay so you're playing that's the kind of fifth above so that's the eleventh fret of the G string playing those both together so just pluck with one and two okay now that's okay and then you've got to keep the B down okay and you're moving up to G sharp so that's 13 and then 14 A that's a big stretch you kind of got to have the bass in the right place if I'm kind of here I can't really play it so you've got to have it really out of high, okay? 
Okay, you can kind of, if you can't keep that B down, because that is quite tough. Okay, you can kind of do that. Okay, and that still sound quite good uh, with the rest of the band. Okay, so that's the first pattern. And I've written this kind of thing that I heard Noel playing. Okay, that kind of little riff there, but you don't have to play that. And then we go down to E, and when we do E, we kind of do this pattern. Okay, so. So again, we're playing the root and fifth, this time on E. Okay. And then we're playing F, G sharp, and then the same thing again. Okay. That's D, C sharp, B. Okay. Remember, this is all on the PDF, okay? So you might want to take it slowly, okay? I'm going through it, for it um, fairly quickly. I appreciate that. But um, try and play that with me. So E. Okay, three, four. And again. Okay, and then you know the riff again on um, B7. that twice and then back to E now the first time we play this pattern this is bar five okay there's a slightly different um, uh, kind of little lick on the end okay okay that's quite tough so F sharp to G hammer on Okay, and then you play the second time you play the um, the E7, you just play the same one as before. Okay, and then back up to B, same pattern. When you get to F sharp, root and fifth, okay, so F sharp here, um, that's on the ninth fret again. F sharp, um, G, G sharp. Down to E7. That same pattern. And then B7. And then this is a half bar of B7. E and then F sharp. Okay. Okay, so I went through that quite quickly, but that's kind of just to show you um, an idea of what Noel Redding's playing there. Okay, so you might not necessarily do it at a gig, um, but it's a really cool um, sounding bass line. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna play that with a drum beat so you can hear me play through once through the chorus. And that's pretty similar really to what um, Noel Redding's playing from what I can really hear on that chorus one of the studio version. <laughs> Okay, so that was the tough version there, um, but now you've got an idea of what Noel Redding did. Um, so now I'm gonna look at a live version. So this is where he plays bass um, and just plays a kind of more standard bass line lower down the bass. This is taken from a live gig um, in Stockholm, Sweden in 1969. So I've put the link um, on the PDF and 
I'll try and put it below the video as well, so you can check that gig out. It's great. Um, the sound quality is not, not fantastic, but it's really great to see it. You can see some close-ups as well of Nile Redding. So what I suggest you do is kind of use this bass I'm going to show you now, and you could mix in some of those chordal patterns, um, say at the start of a guitar solo, if you're playing it at a jam night or you're playing it with some mates or a blues um, gig, okay? So um, I'll now show you this other bass line. So this bass line's a kind of um, walking pattern, really, um, with a few little fills, okay? Uh, I'm not going to show you the whole lot, um, but I'm just going to pick out some bits. So we've got this kind of standard walking... And it's in 12-8 as well, so ding, 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 ding. Keep this kind of each beat divided into three, keep that going. So when you, at the end of the bar, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. Okay, in the bar two, it's got that really nice lick there. Got this kind of triplet, so one, two, three. One, two, three. Stepping back up again. Now I've written a simplified version of this bass line at the end of the PDF. So if you're finding these bits are just a bit too hard to get them, um, play the simplified version. It will sound great as well at a jam night. Okay, but some of you will want to work these bits out. So we've got similar patterns as we go through the bass line. If you um, look at bar four, we're stepping down from B again. And then for this E again. So it's the kind of same thing, but a little lick at the end. And then we're stepping down, down to B. There's lots of these patterns. And then from B, back up again. That's that kind of blues pattern there. But, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through uh, one chorus. So this is kind of the first chorus, really, of that live gig, the bass line from the live gig. So I'm going to play that with, the, with, the, with drums so you can just hear that and follow it through. Okay, well, hopefully you've got a good idea of what Noel Redden did on Red House and how we've got two alternative bass lines and now you know that he played the original studio version on guitar that was detuned. So hopefully that's cleared out a bit of mystery for you. Um, it's quite hard to hear that on the recording because kind of recording qualities in those days, it's fairly muddy and it's mixed fairly close to the kind of guitar to Jimi Hendrix part as well. Now there are different variations as you go through both bass lines, but I've given you the kind of gist of it. Um, so have a listen through and see if you can pick out any other interesting things that Noel Redding's doing. And then try and see if you can incorporate some of those ideas into your own bass line. So really that's the name of the game. You want to kind of listen to these players, take what they're doing and make it your own. So a gig you could start to put some of these chords in. And remember that low note there is the root note, so in a different key, say you started on A, bit of a stretch there um, but you know you get the idea you can kind of do it in different keys as well. If you want a real deep dive into blues then check out my video course and um, this is um, written specifically for bass players it's called Walk the Blues and it's a deep dive into um, the important blues bass players. You'll find links to that course below this video in the description and there are loads of other links there you can um, get to my website gbshed.com I've got 
um, tons more base resources over there, different courses and books. So go and check those all out. So that's gbshed.com. I'd love to hear what you thought of this lesson. So leave me a comment below and let me know how you got on. And if you felt that you got value out of this lesson, then you can always buy me a coffee and the details at the bottom of the screen here. Um, and also I've got links that you can click on in the description. So these coffees just help me to keep these PDFs and videos free. Don't forget to pick up the free PDF and to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and by clicking the red subscribe button. Another lesson of mine that you should definitely check out is my Crossroads video. You can get to that here. So that's a look at what Jack Bruce played on the baseline of the Cream Classic. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. Hopefully see you soon in the next video.